so long? The mass decontamination unit was set up in the wrong place. Also, these suits are difficult to work in, so uh, it's taking longer than anticipated to recover the casualties. How many casualties are you using? 60. 60? How many people work in these offices? Two or three thousand. So it's not exactly realistic, then? It's manageable, Minister. The press are waiting downstairs, Minister. Thank you. I need some help here. That's it, we got you, mate. Are we okay, mate? That's it, relax. You'll be okay. Now let's get showered and out of these suits. Okay, lift your right arm, ladies. Turn around. Okay, good man. Jenny, let's have a look at you. Oh, shit. You're dead, too. You've got a tear. Your suit's ripped. Oh, get out, Jenny. It's important that these drills send out a positive message. 1,600 gas tight suits, 7,000 modesty packs, 10 mobile mass decontamination. The Home Secretary is concerned that we do everything we can to reassure the public. Understood. It's always worth reminding Londoners how resilient they are. Well, I'll put that in the report, will I? OK. Yeah. This was supposed to be easy. I've got Steve on the way to A&E. Why? Hyperventilation. We're only meant to wear those suits for 20 minutes. It was 16 minutes before we get into the car park and Jen got a tear. That's what this drill is for, Murray, to iron out these little problems. <laughs> Biscuits? Minister, Minister, how do you respond to accusations of scaremongering? Unfortunately, we live in difficult times and must be prepared for every eventuality. We believe these drills will reassure the British people that we're doing all we can to protect them against terrorism and that London is as prepared as it possibly can be. This is all part of the government's commitment to be honest about the threats we face and to put as much information in the public domain as we can. The emergency services drill was held in the capital today to test new anti-terrorism measures. The new Minister for London, Nicola Painswick, reassured Londoners that the drill was not linked to any specific threat. West Yorkshire Police confirmed that three men were arrested yesterday outside the US Air Force monitoring station of Menwith Hill. The three men are all being held under the Anti-Terrorism Act. 
Scotland Yard declined to comment on whether the arrests are part of a larger... It's been a busy morning. Two Irish nationals held at Dover, a gun found in their car. Officers are on the way. The US intelligence have passed on six names of suspects they want under surveillance, and the three men arrested at Menwith Hill have been confirmed as North African. Commissioner, sir. Thank you. The local police found notebooks and video footage of the perimeter security. And we flagged up two addresses for them in London. What do we know? Well, it could be GSPC. We're waiting for French and Algerian intelligence to get back to us. An MOD when it kept low-key. Fine. You're dealing with that one. Incident room's being set up. Good. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm looking for DS drama. Stop there. Thanks. DS drama? DC Happy Buller. Oh, great. I'll give you five minutes. You need to get up to speed on the briefing notes. Now, we're assuming the suspects are using false IDs. We believe in North Africa, possibly Algeria. Also, they weren't acting alone, so our job is to uncover any other cell members. This is your desk. Yep. This is propaganda material. Videos, letters, documents recovered from a b and in Leeds and the suspect's registered addresses in London. You need to go through all that lot. Most of it's in Arabic. What languages have you got? Urdu, Punjabi, Arabic. Great. Because normally I get stuck with a civilian translator. I'll need you with me in interviews. You can help me understand what makes them tick. How would I know? I'm from Luton. Sarge. You're better qualified than I am, Detective. Come on, I can have a word. Yeah. Uh, DC Habi Buller. This is D.I. Brooke. Sirs. Glad you're on board. This is all we've got. Get yourself settled. Mm -hmm. I'm an A &E. No, no, I'm fine. It's Steve. Can you uh, pop down? Hi. Oh, hello. How is he? You'll live. The drill went well then. I'm finished in half an hour. We could go home together. Yeah? Oh, well, I'd better make sure Steve gets back all right. You know, if that had been for real, two of my crew would be dead. Deputy Assistant Commissioner Ives, you have previously stated that we must now expect terrorists to use crude CBRN weapons that could cause mass devastation to this city. Could you explain exactly what that means? We're talking about such things as a dirty bomb, which is simply low-grade radioactive material blown up by a conventional bomb. In other words, low-tech methods for contaminating large numbers of people with deadly agents. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, in a public statement, you said that the government is committed to being honest about the threats we face and putting as much information in the public domain as possible. Yes, that is correct. I have in front of me a recent report from the Common Science and Technology Committee. It accuses the government of being embedded in a culture of secrecy. Forgive me, Minister, but this seems to be a direct contradiction to your statement. The government completely rejects the criticism that it is being less open than it need be. We have an active public information campaign. We've sent a booklet to every household in the country. But are you confident that the information that you're giving the public 
is adequate to prepare them for a terrorist attack. Yes, of course. Obviously, there are times when disclosure would not be in the public interest. I'm sorry, but now I'm confused. You're open and transparent, except when it suits the government not to be. Well, obviously, there has to be a balance between truth and reassurance. Are you saying that it's acceptable to lie to the public in order to reassure them? I mean what the public can be told and the need for secrecy. It's very interesting, Minister, but this report clearly states that this lack of openness has resulted in the public being ill-informed and insufficiently prepared for a chemical, biological or radiological terrorist attack. Deputy Assistant Commissioner. As head of the anti-terrorist branch, do you feel that adequate measures are in place to protect the public? Obviously, improvements have been made across all emergency services, but I'd warn against complacency. A great deal of work still needs to be done. Thank you very much. John! That's a public record. And I'm not going on public record to say we're fully prepared when we're not. We've allocated £330 million on homeland security. That's a huge commitment when the public's demanding hospital beds. What else do you expect us to do? In the States, they're spending 15 times more per head than we are, and even they don't think that's enough. You're saying all the work we're doing, all the plans, new equipment count for nothing. I'm saying we shouldn't confuse activity with achievement. Out of a force of 30,000, the Met have only 1,500 officers with protective suits and two days training. We'd struggle to deal with a large-scale conventional attack if a CVRN weapon went if off. If it went off, John. Nicola, if. I've seen Al-Qaeda's plans for these weapons. With the IRA, we knew 90% of what they were up to and they still got through. With this lot, we're lucky if we know 20%. It's naive to hope it won't happen. This is a very popular area. There's a post office close by. Also, the tubes are five minutes away. Buses. And there's a market on Saturday. Show me the cellar. Cleared. It'll cost you. How much? 70 quid. We have accommodation for the bride's family. This isn't the IRA. With this lot, we don't know who they are, we don't know where they are. We have no inside informants, and they don't give warnings. First thing to understand about Islamist terrorist groups, 
There's no single cell. Don't write it down. Remember it. The logistics cell. These boys will be embedded in the target country. They're likely to be British nationals, so they'll stay low key. They won't associate with other known extremists. They may not even attend mosque. Found the house. They raise cash for their group through petty crime like credit card fraud. They provide passports, safe houses, equipment, etc. They gather all the elements that make an operation in this country possible. Now, the three North Africans at Menworth Hill recently entered the country under false IDs. So they won't be part of logistic cells? Correct. They're obviously checking out the base. The sole purpose of a reconnaissance cell is to gather intelligence on intended targets. They're closer to the planning of an attack, and are far more likely to be foreign nationals. But neither the logistics nor the reconnaissance cell will be your suicide bombers. The attack cell. These boys will be your battle-hardened veterans. Jihad nutters who fought in Chechnya, Bosnia, Kashmir. Not just such. Fanatics, however you want to describe them. They're almost certain to be foreign nationals. They're only brought in at the last stages. And as we know, in any attack, there's likely to be more than one attack cell. Our problem is, none of this lot will know who the other cells are, or have any detailed knowledge about the overall operation. But they all have links to one man. The agent isn't the mastermind. That person will be thousands of miles away in Pakistan, or Afghanistan. <laughs> The agent is the manager. He puts the cells together and executes the plan. He'll be white collar, well traveled, highly educated, and have lived in the West for several years. He'll have multiple identities and impeccable cover. He could be a doctor, a lawyer, a university professor. The point is, he'll be invisible and skilled at hiding his tracks. So far, all we have are three suspects, a possible reconnaissance cell. If we're going to get the rest of them, we have to chase every person they've ever been in contact with, here or abroad, follow every paper trail. Anything that strikes you, however small, let me know. What are you find? Yeah. Can I get uh, 20 JPS, please? And a SIM card from a mobile and a pay go top-up card, please. What? Ma, you don't have to be ashamed. Why did you wear your clothes like this? Oh, piss off. Hey. Come on, let's go. Uh, yes, I'll Home Secretary wondered how you're settling in. Oh, I'm still trying to find my way around, but fine. You had a bit of a grilling at the Defence Select Committee. The chair got um, rather hung up on the issue of public information. May I? Of course. <laughs> it's an easy issue to present in black and white if you're not making the decisions. Maybe the chair's right. Maybe we're not doing enough to train and prepare the public. If a CBR an attack happens, I'm worried that we could end up with mass panic on our hands. I've been at Whitehall 25 years. There have been at least 80 terrorist attacks on the mainland. Why assume the British public is suddenly going to start running around like headless chickens? We're talking about suicide bombers now. No warnings, biological weapons, dirty bombs. If you start issuing gas masks to everyone using the tubes, you really do risk causing panic. Al-Qaeda want to scare. The more you fuel public anxiety, the more you play into their hands. I understand that. Think of the economic implications. Business withdrawing from the capital, the tourist industry here. We've already had local authorities using Madrid to demand extra funds. We don't want knee-jerk reactions from the public. What are you well. saying? Don't you take the threat of a CBR and attack seriously? 
I'm saying it's a difficult balance. Overreaction can be as dangerous as underreaction. As Minister of London, it's your responsibility to reassure the public and business. Everything is being done to make London as prepared as it possibly can be. It's an issue that's easy to get worked up about from the back benches. Never that simple when you're minister. Mogul Prince Takeaway, speaking. Uh-huh. Yeah. Will you be there after midnight? Bye. Customs. What? They want to know why one of my officers is inquiring about DNL shipping. It's one of the names I came across in the suspects' notebooks. I ran them through NC's database. I told you to let me know. Sorry, you're right. Did Customs tell you what their interest is? They believe Turkish Mafia are using DNL as a smuggling drop. Shit, it would be Customs. Any chance they'll let us look at their phone records and their shipping manifests? They're not going to rush to share information. They're months into a major investigation. It's only paperwork. You must know someone that owes you a favour. I'll talk to Brooke. I've run out of favours. Have you everything you need? For now. You need a large lead sheet to make a hatch. Just a precaution. There you are. Come upstairs, I'll introduce you properly to your brothers. Got any plans tonight? Why? Have we had from customs? You must be joking. Come on, you can leave that. Mm. Oh, Jackie hasn't spoke to you. So, Samina. Is there not notice? What's it all about? You're being serious. Let's we'll talk about football, if you like. What do you mean, blowing themselves up? Fundamentalism? What? All of it. I mean, if your family's killed right in front of you in Chechnya, it might cross your mind, but why would a third-generation kid brought up in Bradford want you to join Al-Qaeda? Well, it doesn't matter if you're brought up in Bradford or in Saudi. If you're a Muslim, you're part of a wider family. What happens in Chechnya, Kashmir or Palestine is happening to you. Well, it's a long way from that to strapping explosives to yourself. Yeah, but what these boys see makes them angry. And extremist groups exploit that anger. 
They recruit men from all over the world, get them into training camps and focus that anger. It's brainwashing. They hand them a Kalashnikov, convince them it's their holy duty to die in the defense of Islam. So when they ask for five martyrs, hundreds step forward. How do you feel about that? Pissed off. These fanatics are just a tiny minority. And people think we're all like that. I take my faith seriously. I care about what's happening in the world, but you don't see me strapping explosives to myself, do you? So that's why you joined the police. No, I wasn't clever enough to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Phone records and shipping manifest from DNL shipping. Courtesy of our friends at Customs. Good hunting. Samina, see you in the morning. Yeah. Even before the terrible events in Madrid. London's emergency services were being prepared for a major terrorist attack. Under our New Dimensions initiative, London Fire Brigade have now been equipped with extended life breathing apparatus. They have over 1,600 gas-tight suits and new radiation dosimeters in all engines. Senior officers are receiving state-of-the-art training in Texas. And there are 10 mobile mass decontamination units established right across the capital. The success of the recent drill is a clear demonstration of how capable London's emergency services are in dealing with incidents of major contamination. Who's been telling of this? Of course, we can't afford to be complacent. But London is now better prepared than it has ever been. Thank you very much. Minister, this is Commander Paul Hardwick. He's one of our gold commanders in charge of GT control room. Commander. Pleased to meet you, Minister. Very interesting speech. Minister, were you at the same drill I was? Sorry, you are... I'm sorry, I'm Murray Corrigan, watch commander, London Fire Service. That drill was a farce, wasn't it? Have you ever worn a GT suit? You can't work in them. They're unwieldy. You boil. What you're asking us to do with this equipment is totally unreal. We've had a lot of problems with our kit. Clive Phelps, London Ambulance Service. Half our suits were defective. We had to send them back. When we put the decon showers on, the heads blew off. I um, appreciate your concerns. That's why we're doing drills. Well, that wasn't well, a drill. It was a PR stunt. Of the Controlled conditions, police cadets as your casualties. We're constantly reviewing our plans. Well, exactly. They're your plans. I have never been consulted. Murray. I have never been invited to any strategy meetings. I haven't even seen your new major incident procedures. Well, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. We have to limit access to these plans in the interests of national security. What a fucking great excuse for incompetence. very sorry, Minister. I understand. Change can be very unsettling. With respect, my officers trained as firemen. Now they're expected to be the front line in your war on terror. They're putting their lives at risk, and none of us know if your plans work. Excuse me. Take it around the back. 
I used to really look forward to going to work. They're perfectly happy to spend billions on Iraq, MI5, a sexy new British FBI. You'd think they could spend a bit more on us. Still, the rumour is that the first officers in are expendable, so maybe that's why they don't want to waste their money. If you really believe that, perhaps you should get out. Well, whatever you decide to do, I'll support you. Demanding, I'll put you on charges. I'll be a watch commander down, right? We've already lost two senior officers this year. Bollocks, I'm resigning anyway. Mobilize, mobilize. Foxtrot 571, Foxtrot 572. Road traffic accidents at junction of commercial roads and Canada Street. Multiple vehicles on the track. Alpha 236, that's all you. Three calls to an address in Leeds, nothing logged. Local are looking into it. Seven calls to an address in Kentish Town, flagged. NCS already investigating, we're talking to them. One call to an address in Neasden, the Mughal Prince takeaway, logged. A Muslim neighbor called the anti-terrorist hotline complaining about the two men that live above the takeaway. It might be something. In a statement, she describes them as fanatics. Do we know who they are? We're running checks. I could send an officer over to talk to her, get more details. You go. She'll find it easy talking to you. Did you get the number? No, but a white one again. In your statement, you said that they were moving barrels. What the sex of them again? Again, they're all very late at night. What happened? Anything else makes you suspicious? Eh, SIM card bade khareed dene. You described them as fanatics to the anti-terrorist hotline. I don't trust them. Something in the way they behave. Unki, Zuban, Labas? My daughter was a very rude, sir. What did they say? Oh, pandi jean, t-shirts. You understand? Ji. But if you have any Muslims, why do you go to the mosque? I have never seen a Muslim police woman. Where are you? What do you say to your father? They think. They think, but they're proud. Okay. Rashid Da and Dimran Azir, both registered at 66A Craven Lane. Both claiming social security benefit, both British nationals. Neither has a record, neither has been associated with any extremist groups, as far as we know. Check with provincial forces, see if there's anything else. Any travel detail? They both have multiple entry visas for Pakistan and Saudi. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. It could be family trips, pilgrimage to Mecca. Half my relatives would be suspects based on that. You're the one asking for intrusive surveillance. There's other leads we could be chasing. Yes or no? My instinct is that the woman is right about them. Fine. He's got the steering wheel in his ribs, and I'm saying to him, there's no other way for me to get you out of here, mate. God, is he all right? Oh, he'll be fine. Anyway, there he is. He's trapped in his car. His phone's ringing. He starts looking for it, and he answers it. And it's his girlfriend. She's in a restaurant waiting for him. They're supposed to be having lunch or something. And he says, no, look, love, I'm trapped in the car and I can't get out. I've got a fireman chopping me out of it. 
She doesn't believe him. Goes off on one, so he has it to me. And she's absolutely furious. Now, I've never heard anything like it in my life. What, with him for being late? No, for crashing the car. Ah. It's her car. Did she calm down? Eventually. Anyway, I saved him. I saved his relationship. I killed the car. My hero. <laughs> so you're not resigning then? Well, what else would I do? Decorate the kitchen, yeah. fix the guttering. Look, I'm sorry I was so down. It's OK, I understand. I work for National Health. <laughs> Hi, thanks. You're welcome, welcome, my friend. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam, ya akhi. I hope you're well and I hope your family's well. I'm going to go to the hospital and the Arabic language is not going to be able to get out of here. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 And I'm going to go to the hospital. And what are the other things that you asked me about? I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. Are you sure? أريدك أن ترحل من هنا رتب أمورك وفاف تغادر قبل يوم الاثنين I'm sorry, I don't understand I want you gone by Monday Why Monday? I've done your job well Stay with original target. This is where he wipes his cup. I'd say the stranger is his superior. You saw the way he behaved when Dar stood. We got any DNA? Forensics has the cup. What are the chances of getting an ID from the photo? It's for five and six, and it could take up to 48 hours before we hear back. What do we know? We found a reference for DNL shipping in one of the North African's notebooks. A phone call was logged from DNL to Mughal Prince Takeaway. Dar and Nazir both work there. An eyewitness saw them unloading metal barrels at night. Customs believe DNL is used by a lot of foreign outfits. Are we just looking at a couple of petty crooks smuggling IDs? They're clearly devout and disciplined. We've identified extremist literature on their shelves. They're careful to cover their tracks. All this suggests that they've been trained. Have we found the logistics cell for the North Africans? No, I don't think so. Why not? These boys are Pakistani. They operate through different networks. So are you saying we could have stumbled upon a logistics cell for a completely separate operation? Yes, sir. Shit. We'll have a better idea when we know who he is. If the lion was to come, suddenly come and go, uh. do you think the camel? Or the lion would be more stronger. Yalla, Habibi. What to know? Oh, good boy. Oh, it's the Baba Bosa. It's the Baba Bosa. Wow. Oh, no. Allah. 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 Bye-bye. Bosa, Bosa. Allah. There is deepening concern around the world about the rising violence in Iraq. Faced with continued unrest and a hostage crisis, some governments... Who does لا أريد أن أشعر بهذا لو سمحت لي دي؟ نحن محتاجين نتكلم مع بعض طيب تفي وتذاكر ومستندات ليكي ولعبد الله أنت هتسافروا لإسلام بعد بكرة المساء خدي معك بس اللي هتحتاجيه ما عنديش أهل في باكستان أخوك هيسافر معك ولما توصلوا هناك هيكونوا في ناس ينتعنوا بيكي لا أنا مش رايحة إحنا ما عندناش ما عندناش طريقة تانية غير كده طب ابني ليه لسه بجد مدرسة؟ عنده أصحاب هنا هنعمل إيه فيها؟ وأنا هتعمل فين؟ أنا محتاج أعرف إنه أنت هتكونوا في أمان دي وصيتي وفيها طريقة اللي أنا عاوز عبد الله يتربى بيها دي حاجة مهمة خالص ليا مش الوقت دي الوقت مش الوقت ايوه ايوه 
виж, тук има май някакъв човек. Ела, ела, ти има тяло. Тяло, да? Какво се едно? Това е една мечка. canisters all contain radioactive material in powder form. Powder, uh, mother, uh, mm. These smaller ones contain alpha sources. This you can handle safely. It's only dangerous if you get it on your skin or you inhale it. Breathe it in. Now you must wear these masks when you work with it. These larger ones contain gamma radiation. This is much more dangerous. In this concentration, as soon as that lid is opened, you've got 60 seconds. After that, it's going to make you very, very sick. Shuhaza, فهل تفهمون لديك لكل منكم 60 ثانية فقط فسوف نتتابع بنقل البودرة إلى وعاء القنبلة. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. And the whole operation shouldn't take more than four minutes. أكثر من ذلك سوف تصابوا بمرض يمنعكم من إكمال واجبكم. مفهوم. Drag him in. How long is this going to take? I've got the boys downstairs. The chance that radioactive material has been smuggled into the country. The body was found in Bulgaria last Tuesday. He's been identified as Usman Selkuk, the Turkish shipping agent and a suspected smuggler. He's been exposed to a fatal dose of gamma radiation. Now, we know at least 50 different shipments left this man's depot in Sofia one week prior to his death. Shipments were destined for 17 different countries. The UK is among them. Why are we worried? We think they may have found a logistics server so links to the same Turkish smuggling cartel. His body was discovered five days ago. Why are we just getting the information now? The intel went to five. They didn't consider it a priority. Oh, God. All right, thank you. Get me D.R. Lane and D.S. Drummer. Did you put the lids back on? The lids? Are they on? Uh, no. Ana Asif, Asif Kedar.
Five have identified the man who met with Rashid Dar as Ahmed Ibrahim Abbasi. He's a Jordanian management consultant, registered as a mature student at London University, living here in the UK with his wife and child. He's also lived in Cairo, Hamburg and Paris. Now, his credentials seem legitimate, but we do know that he accepted passports from Dar and that he took the trouble to wipe his fingerprints. Do we know where he is? Only a previous address. We're trying to get a current one from the college. We do have another problem. Surveillance team on Dar and Nazir say they're packing up, possibly destroying evidence. Should we pick them up? I'd prefer to keep watching. We're confident they're not an attack cell, so let's just see where they take us. How serious is the radiation threat? Well, with no direct evidence that radioactive material has been smuggled into this country. Has anything come up on the radiation detectors in the ports? No, but there's been no intel. They check 10, 20 percent of the cargo. Not even if the dead Turk was smuggling a gamma source. There's no proven link to him and Nazir and Dar. I mean, the material could have gone to any number of clients. 643 incidents of radiation trafficking in the last six years. And they're the ones we know about. And with no specific intel suggesting a dirty bomb threat to the UK. You've gone back to five and six. Are they certain about that? Well, we're trawling all intelligence noise just in case they've missed something. I'm not happy that Dar and Azir are packing up. I want their flat turned over. And DNL shipping. I'll square it with customs later. Take CBRN teams and pick up Abassi before tomorrow, if possible. If we spook him and lose him, that's the risk I'll have to take. Odair? Aywa. Anna Yusuf Ramidi. Asagil Shahadati Lakhira. Wasiyati. إن عاملي في هذا اليوم هو دفاع عن العمة وعن المسلمين في جميع أنحاء العالم بعدما أصبحوا ضحايا الأعمال الوحشية التي يقوم بها الكفار في الموت نعيش بالسلام ونصبح أقرب إلى الله أنا مستعد للموت كفداه Allah Akbar. Of terrorist activities. Oh, hold on. Let's chat first. Back these separately, okay? No sign of those barrels anywhere. That's funny, because we know you picked them up. What was in the barrels, Rashid? Where are they now? We know you only started packing yesterday. Why the hurry? What did Abassi tell you to do?
Foxtrot 571 responding. What just happened, Paul? Large explosion, Liverpool Street. Could be gas, plane down, or a bomb. We're still trying to contact city police at Bishopsgate. Got a visual north end of Bishopsgate. On to. Probable incendiary device. Can confirm Grand oh. Zero is Liverpool Street. Repeat. Grand Zero is Liverpool Street. All units be alert. Indian 99. Has anyone checked for contamination? It's on now. Box drop 571 to control. Dosimeters alarming. Repeat, dosimeters alarming. Radiation suspected reading 26 millisieverts holding position over. Box drop 571 to control. Recall. Recall. Box drop 571 to control. We have suspected mass casualties. We have serious fire hazards. We need all services at site ASAP. We have a major incident. Repeat, major incident. Box drop 571, status to receive. Control report that several units approaching the site are recording high levels of radiation. Reports are from multiple entry routes surrounding incident. North Bishopsgate, London Wall, Houndsditch, corner of Threadneedle and Bishopsgate. Get that helicopter back. Tom, get onto the bomb squad, find out what we're dealing with. Is it just radiation in this bomb? How bad is it? I need dirty bomb plans on all terminals. I need safe sites for Jessic marshalling area. No more emergency vehicles are to enter the site. Any personnel already committed are contaminated. They must withdraw to a safe distance and stay put to be nowhere to set up decon. definitely contaminated. We've got higher levels of radiation on site. No, I don't know what Any else. Any fire officers reach ground zero? Tom, Hang give on. me fire, ambulance, military liaison here now. Make sure number 10 is informed and see how long it'll take government liaison to get here. So I just want to know where to withdraw to. Okay. Tell them 400... No, 500 metres and come to stay put until further notice. We need all potential target locations cordoned and cleared. If it's suicide bombers, we have to expect secondary devices. Sergeant. Any way I can look at CCTV footage of Liverpool Street before the incident? Hang on a minute. No, we can't play that back from here, but I can patch it through to the surveillance suite at Wood Street. Joe, it's line one. Bomb incident. Sir? Ambulance wants to know what they should do with casualties. Should take casualties to hospital or take contamination with them. If it's life or death, it's the ambulance call, but they must liaise with hospital A&Es. Sir, what about the casualties trapped at ground zero? We'll deal with that later. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Move away from the area! Move away from the area! Move back, please! Just get back! 
Just get back now, please! Move away! That way, sir! That way! Corrigan. Corrigan. Rank. Watch commander. Go see me the reading. 43. 43. Here, please. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys got a mobile that works? No. No? no. Is you, you bastard? We've not been able to get close than 400 yards to the site of the blast. But what's even more alarming is that emergency yes. vehicles have been held back. Hold the line. Yes. Sir, yes. No Liverpool Street are holding all trains on the line outside the station. They want to know where to disembark the passengers. Tell them to hold. No one should leave the area without decontamination. Tom, what's the weekday population of the square mile? Over 300,000. But if you include the surrounding residential areas, closer to a million. Get back to me on that as soon as you can. This lady needs a hospital. Move to the front. Can you help this lady? You can't stay here. You've got to move back. I've got seriously injured people, mate. The instructions are you leave the cars and choose your car. Well, do you want to tell them that? We're not going anywhere till we get some proper medical assistance. Okay, I've got an image outside Liverpool Street Station. Sir. Tell me what you're seeing. It's a white transit van. Two people in the cab. Can't see the registration. Whoa, shit! What? They were in the van when it went up, sir. Just checking another camera to see if I can get the number. Please. White van, suicide bomber. You need to check for any other suspect vehicles. Under no circumstances must an officer approach. Sir. Sir. OK. Officers on yeah, streets in I need a direct patch areas. to surveillance on units covering canary vehicles. wharf, Isle of Dogs, particularly white, Tower Branch, branch East of City, Repeat, Canary Wharf, Isle of Dogs. Confirm two people in the van, number plate X-ray 334, X-ray Bravo, Romeo. As the following, Parliament Square, Oxford Street, Central London, Westminster Bridge. X-ray 334, X-ray Bravo, Romeo, confirm. Correct. Put this number plate through the ring of steel camera. It'll give us the face of the driver. Hang on, I've got something else. They swapped drivers. There were three people in the van. They've switched drivers inside the ring of steel. The original driver got out on Bishop's Gate. Sir. We know this man. I'm sending you a photo. A man known as Ahmed Ibrahim Abassi. I'll need an all ports now. He's probably using false ID. Get on to DS Drummer. You can go if you want. Where's Abassi? What's he planning? What's the next target? Mother and Line Chuff. Sarge, fire and ambulance need to know where to send their mass decon units. We've got to establish hot and cold zones first. Just give me a moment. Sir, how the hell are we going to do this? We're getting wildly different readings from all over the place. Alan, Alan, what does it say in the procedure? 
fragmentation. It says it's vital to make fragmentation distance assessment to allow for eddies and microclimate differentiation. The fuck does that mean? Mark, where's the science officer? Still struggling to get in, sir. Get him on the radio. Alan, get on to the Met Office, find out which way the wind's blowing. Sir, fire are getting reports of numerous casualties still trapped at ground zero. India 99 to control. We now have secondary fires in surrounding buildings. Maintaining safe distance. Over. So what's the plan? Why the hell are we just standing here? We're on hold. We're working on it. We've got suits and breathing apparatus. We should be back in there. All units are recalled, Murray. We still don't know exactly what we're dealing with. But who's in the golden hour? There are people alive in there, and we've abandoned them. And we don't do that. We can't reach Liz. All the networks are down, mate. I'm sure she'll be fine. Let me stress right from the outset that for someone who has not caught the blast, who is away from the site of the blast itself, such a person is at very little risk Understood. to health. Certainly an immediate. Sir, but what about people science officer the says area? they're getting both alpha and gamma radiation readings. No one should be deployed in the hot zone without full CBRM protection. Understood. People should cover their faces with whatever they can. They should cover any cuts and abrasion. Sir. Some Luke's and Mile End hospitals are being overwhelmed by self presenters coming out of the hot zone. Crowd is contaminated. Hospitals requesting police assistance to hold them back. Tunnel will have to wait. Tom, can we spare the manpower? The inner cordon's a kilometre diameter. So the outer cordon will need over a thousand officers. How many have you actually got with suits? 500, mostly TSG. Military liaisons say they can mobilise a couple of hundred troops within the hour. That's a last resort. I don't want a soldier on a civilian court. The important thing for anyone caught inside the hot zone is to be decontaminated before trying to go home to their families. Otherwise, they risk taking, of course, a radioactive contamination back to their families. Contaminated family. people that are getting out. Suits or not, we have to contain this. Listen up. I want manned barriers at 2,000 metres. Filter everyone in that area into decon cordons. Try to hold those lines. No one to cross until mass decon is set up. Understood? Sir. Sir. They're afraid they might have been contaminated, exposed to radiation, and they simply want help. I'll be far more useful down there. They need to see a government face on the front line. Hospital staff here are insisting they can only treat the serious casualties. They're actually refusing entry to the many minor injuries caused by flying glass. Now, someone has to reassure them. Basically, there's a lack of clear information. The press are already at the cordons. You can see is fueling an awful lot of anger. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we're just receiving reports I... uh, confirming that all emergency vehicles have been withdrawn from what they're calling Ground Zero. Confirm van at Telecom Tower has two people in cab. Number plate for Canary Wolf van not registered. Number plate's dead end, sir. We're getting reports of a third suspect van parked with driver. Perks way between Abbey Orchard Street and St Peter's Street. Perks way between Abbey Orchard Street and Back of the DTI, Street. Westminster. Back of the DTI, Westminster. Coming on screen now. OK, can you still down? Further. Can you zoom in further? Is that the best we can get? Can you get another camera on it? Sorry, Mr Ives, we really need you to make a statement. Another angle. That's the best they've got, sir. I want SO-19 in place, with riflemen where possible. Keep watching them, but no one is to approach those vans. If they are suicide bombers, the slightest thing spooks them and they'll detonate. Sir. <coughs> what else have they got planned? Mom. How many devices are there? How many devices are there? Sarge, tenancy agreement. 46 Churchill Avenue, Wilston Green, three months paid in advance. What's there, Rashid? Take Phillips and whoever's still here from SO19. Come with me. We go live now to Scotland Yard, where we're expecting a statement from the Deputy Assistant Commissioner John Ives of the anti-terrorist... Phillips, bomb. come with me. And you. A large bomb hidden in a van was detonated at 8 a.m. outside Liverpool Street Station. 
We believe that the bomb might have been used to disperse small amounts of radioactive contamination, which is why every necessary precaution has been taken. In the meantime, we need the public to stay calm and stay put. If you're already in your home, stay in your home. If you're in your office, please remain there. All Londoners not in the vicinity of the incident should go in, stay in, and tune out. There is no significant risk to your health, but it is vital that you must be careful before you go home. Man, it's not going to be safe. No, they said they should stay inside. Oh, they're going to stay inside. Mass decon units have been dispatched to the cordons at London Wall, Commercial Road, London Bridge, Old Street. Priority routes are filtering everyone still inside the zone to these four points. Tom, how long are we going to have to hold people there? Uh, we've got ten mass decon units in London, more en route from the regions, but assume human fire and water can get them up and running in half an hour. They're supposed to do about 200 people an hour. So how many people are we talking about? 100,000, 200,000. I don't know how many people are still in there. It's 10, 12 hours minimum. Right. We better organize food and drink. Oh, no, you can't do that. They mustn't put their hands near their mouths. No smoking, no eating, no drinking. They could ingest radiation. Has anyone told them that? Well, haven't you? Sir, we've got a major problem. Fires are burning out of control at Ground Zero. We've no idea how bad the situation is at Ground Zero, so officers must wear GT suits. Suits don't give protection against gamma. That's what the dosimeters are for. And we should expect concentrated pockets of gamma radiation close to the blast site. That means officers are going to have to check their meters every minute. And what's the maximum dose? Female officers can't risk exposure to yeah. radiation at all. We can only ask male officers to volunteer to take up to 100 millisieverts. Anything above that's at their own risk. How do we get men in from this distance on that time scale? Well, we could use engines that are already contaminated to drive relays. Yeah, but it's going to be hard getting the engines close. There's rubble everywhere. They'll be lucky to last longer than 20 minutes in those suits. So the first officers in are going to need to know the ground. You and your men have already received half their maximum dose. So the release better get in faster. How many men do we have available right now? A couple of hundred that we can ask to get suited up. Uh, traffic's gridlocked. The majority of the force is struggling to get here. If you want it, you're first in. You better talk to your crew. people uh, behind the cordon uh, in need of immediate uh, decontamination. Right. In the process now of setting up a decontamination unit, it's literally a couple of minutes before we're ready to uh, get the, uh, the uh, decon unit open uh, on its way to bring people through there ASAP. Confirmed, the house is secure. We have one casualty, one suspect dead. Roger, understood. Ambulance on route, medical team on route. Man, it's hot. The whole house is hot. We've got to get out. Clear the house. We've got to get out now. Clear the house. Clear the house.
Murray. Murray. When your dosing meter gets to 100, you come out. Do you understand? We need a decontamination team down here before anyone can go in and check forensics. Give me the radio. Sir, this is DC Habi Buller. I'm looking at a rental agreement for a white transit van. Registration, Oscar Uniform 53 Sierra Foxtrot Foxtrot. Yeah? No, that's not the van that detonated. Sir, they recovered documents for a rented van. White Ford Transit. Registration, Oscar, Oscar Uniform, Uniform 53 five, three. Sierra, Sierra Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Foxtrot. It's not the Canary Wharf van. Does anyone have a visual on the number plates of suspect vehicles at Westminster and Telecom Tower? Yalla. Van one on the move. That's our van. Go, go. No clean shot, target obscured. Take it. are en route. What's your dosimeter reading? Hang on. 250. Repeat. 250. You're over your limit. You need to get your crew out now. Negative. We can't pull over. We need more men. another mass decon unit. All of the decon units in London are committed to minister. Can't we get hold of any more? We have more en route from other parts of the country, but we're not sure when they'll get here. Oh, 
radiation has spread east by northeast with prevailing winds. Alert. Mile and hospitals and all medical units in the area be advised radiation is spreading. Do not let people leave the hospital buildings. Sarge, Do not use London Wall Cordon reports radiation readings of 50 millisieverts. They want to relocate mass decon to a safe distance. No, negative. Hold position. On, on my comms, please. Transfer. Yeah, extra manpower is on its way to assist. Do not dismantle your decon until you have their backup. Whatever happens, you must hold that cordon line. If the perpetrators of this dreadful evil think that they can demoralise and intimidate us, they are wrong. Londoners have coped with terrorist attacks many times before. We are doing everything we can to protect and inform people. I need to ask you to move. Decon is being relocated. You need to move. Situation understood.
Are you ready for this? Ahmed Ibrahim Abbasi, also known as Nabil Qasim, also known as Abu Azam. Born Hanif Abash, a man Jordan, June 17, 1971. Pakistani ISI are holding your wife. Your son Abdullah, as far as we know, is in an orphanage. Your son has no family to claim him. Do you care what happens to him? He's four years old. كل مشقة تقع علينا ما هي إلا اختبارا لإيماننا وإخلاصنا لله وصيره في أيد الله. You decided his fate. You kill those people, not Allah. إنه من الواجب على كل مسلم أن يدافع عن أمة الإسلام. Slaughtering innocent men, women, and children is not defending the brotherhood. It is a crime against Islam. وهل دماءهم أغلى من الذي يقتلون كل يوم في كابول أم الله بغداد؟ And what happens now? The West retaliates. Thousands more Muslims will die. خايفة يكون ذلك دفاعاً عن الأمة. We expect your retaliation. It is what unites us and divides you. Hi, this is Tim the ICU unit, is please. Yeah, down there, follow the corridor on your left. Make good progress. You need to understand there will be long term effects. Good news is that Murray should be able to come home in the next couple of weeks. We'll make regular outpatients appointments, but you should be alert for any signs of melanoma, tumors, skin lesions, any unusual changes to the skin. I'm afraid there may be problems if you want to have children. We have consultants here that you're married to. understand. The death toll as a direct result of the city bombing has been confirmed at 375, although some medical experts warned that there could be thousands of long-term cancer deaths as a result of exposure to radiation. Scientists from the Atomic Energy Agency have announced that three and a half square miles of central and eastern London may have to remain sealed off for as long as 30 years. Thousands of businesses caught in the contamination zone have been forced to close. Millions of pensions, savings and trust funds may never recover. As London house prices continue to plummet, analysts warn that the full cost of the bombing is impossible to calculate. In the hunt for the ringleaders of the dirty bomb attack, British police say they've received unprecedented cooperation from all international intelligence services. Later in the program, we'll be talking to the head of the anti- The Prime Minister vowed that the government will not rest until all the terrorists who threaten the civilized world are brought to justice.